Hi everyone, welcome to Math Lee. Today, we are diving into classification and classification trees. These methods help us categorize data into defined groups based on patterns and decision-making rules. If you have ever wondered how algorithms can decide whether an email is spam or not, or how they classify a patient as high or low risk, you're about to find out. And the best part, we'll exploit visually using the Orange data mining software. Let's get started. Imagine you have a dataset of students' number of studied hours and the attendance to classes. Your goal is to predict whether a student will pass or fail. This is where classification comes in. Classification is a supervised learning method where we train a model to assign items into predefined categories based on their features. For example, in our previous case, the features could be studied hours and attendance, and the categories would be pass or fail. Let's think of another example. Imagine you're running a store and want to predict whether a customer will buy a product or not. The features could include the time spent on the product page, the number of items in their cart, and whether they've clicked on related ads. Based on these features, the model can classify the customer into categories such as likely to buy or not likely to buy. Classification has countless applications in real life, from predicting diseases in medical diagnostics to segmenting customers in marketing. It is a powerful tool for making decisions based on patterns in data. Decision trees are one of the most versatile and widely used tools in machine learning. Think of them as a flowchart that helps make decisions by breaking down data into smaller, manageable parts. They can be used for two main tasks, classification and regression. Decision trees for classification. These are a type of decision tree specifically designed to predict categories or classes. Imagine predicting whether a student will pass or fail based on features like hours studied and attendance. Decision trees for regression. On the other hand, decision trees can also be used to predict continuous values, such as forecasting house prices based on size and location. While decision trees are incredibly versatile, in this video, we will focus on classification trees, exploring how they help us to categorize and predict outcomes. Let's dive in. For example, let's say we're predicting whether a student will pass or fail. The tree might start with the root question. Did the student study for more than five hours? If the answer is yes, the branch may lead to pass. If not, the next question might be, was their attendance above 75%? The answers to these questions continue to split the data until we reach a final outcome like pass or fail. What makes classification trees so appealing is their visual simplicity. They're easy to interpret even for non-technical users. With just a glance, you can understand how the model makes its decisions. This is especially useful in fields such as education, healthcare, and marketing. Now, let's move into Orange software and build our classification tree step by step. Before we dive in, let's take a closer look at the dataset we'll be using throughout the demonstration. So we'll be using the famous IRIS dataset. This dataset is widely used in data science for its simplicity and effectiveness in explaining classification concepts. It contains the measurements of three species of iris flowers, iris setosa, iris versicolor, and iris virginica. As you can see in this image, the flowers have subtle differences, and our task is to classify them based on four features, sepal length, sepal width, petal length, and petal width. The iris dataset comes preloaded in Orange, making it easy to use for this demonstration. Now, let's jump into Orange and see how we can classify these flowers using a decision tree. I'll explain the setup step by step. As you can see, I have already loaded the iris dataset and we can see what's in the dataset from the data table widget. So, here we have the data table widget connected to the dataset widget. As you can see, it includes the features sepal length, sepal width, petal length, and petal width. The iris column contains the labeled species indicating the type of flower. Once the dataset is loaded, I have connected it to the classification tree widget to model the data. 
This widget uses the features in the Iris dataset, such as sepal and petal lengths and widths, to build a decision tree that predicts the flower species. Next, I have forwarded the model output to the prediction widget. This widget allows us to test how well the model performs on new data. I have connected another widget to the classification tree widget called the Tree Weaver. This widget helps us to visualize the structure of the decision tree. I'll explain it in more detail later. So, to test the model, I have added a separate file with a custom test dataset. In this file, I've included four rows, each with different combinations of sepal and petal lengths and widths, representing measurements of flowers we want to classify. Finally, I have connected the test dataset to the prediction widget. This widget compares the test data to the model and provides predictions for each flower based on its features. These predictions give us an idea of how well the classification tree performs on unseen data. Now that we have seen how the model makes predictions on new data, let's take a closer look at the decision tree itself. To do this, as I mentioned before, I've connected another widget called the Tree Viewer to the classification tree. This widget allows us to visualize the tree structure and understand how the model makes its predictions. Here is the decision tree generated from the iris dataset. Each split in the tree represents a decision based on one of the features, like petal length or petal width. Starting from the root node, the tree splits the data step by step, helping us classify the flowers into one of the three species, Iris setosa, Iris versicolor, or Iris virginica. For example, the first split is based on petal length. If the petal length is less than or equal to 1.9, the flower is classified as iris setosa with 100% confidence, meaning all the flowers in this branch belong to this species. But if the petal length is greater than 1.9, the tree makes another decision based on petal width. If the petal width is less than or equal to 1.7, the tree further checks the petal length to make a more refined prediction. And then, if the petal length is less than or equal to 4.9, the flower is predicted to be iris versicolor with a confidence of 97.9%. However, if the petal length is greater than 4.9, the tree looks at the petal width once again. If the petal width is less than or equal to 1.5, the flower is classified as iris virginica with 100% confidence. On the other hand, if the petal width is greater than 1.5, it predicts iris versicolor, though with a lower confidence of 66.7%. Likewise, the decision tree continues to split the data step by step using the features to classify each flower species based on their unique combinations of sepal and petal measurements. This process allows the tree to systematically group and identify patterns in the dataset, making it an effective tool for classification tasks. Classification trees are not just tools for academic datasets like IRIS. They have practical applications across various industries solving real-world challenges. Here are a few examples. Healthcare diagnostics. Doctors use them to analyze symptoms and test results to predict conditions like diabetes or heart diseases. Fraud detection. In banking, they are used to flag suspicious transactions by examining patterns such as location, frequency, and amount. Retail personalization. Retailers use them to recommend personalized products based on customers' buying behavior. Education insights. Schools predict student performance by analyzing factors like attendance, grades, and participation. Energy management. Utility companies optimize energy distribution by predicting usage trends. These examples highlight how classification trees simplify complex decisions, making them valuable tools in various industries. And that is a wrap on classification and classification trees. These tools are incredibly powerful for analyzing data and tackling real-world challenges. I hope this demonstration gave you a clear understanding of how they work and how you can apply them in your own projects.
If you found this video helpful, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to Mathly for more data science tutorials. Comment below with what you would like to learn next. Thank you for watching and see you next time.